Join us on a festive walk through Union Square and Bryant Park holiday markets to find out what makes these markets so iconic. And stick around, we're having lunch for the first time at Bryant Park Grill. And look at what we found on our little holiday journey here at Herald Square. And they are setting up the displays for the holiday. Very exciting and really cool to be here to see how the magic happens. So give love has been the theme for a while. Can't wait to see the windows, but it's looking great. And we are in Harold Square Park. This is right across the street from Macy's. And in this area, you can sit down so you can grab yourself a little something from Wing Dings or um, any place else around the area and have yourself a seat. So while we're in the neighborhood, we're taking a look at the windows that aren't open for Macy's holiday. And at the moment, it's not your typical holiday windows just yet. Until you get over here. This is so cool. Square Holiday Market is located in Union Square Park. That's at 14th Street and Union Square. There are many trains that you can take from across the city to get you there in no time. Now Union Square Park was originally opened back in 1839. It was redesigned in 1872 by the famous architect Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vaux. Now this particular park was intended always to be a gathering space for communities and in fact the first Labor Day Parade in New York was held here back in 1892. This year the Union Square Market opened on November 14th and is slated to close for the season on December 24th. The normal hours for the market are Monday through Friday 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. and on the weekends from 10 to 8. At this market, you will find about 180 or so vendors. They sell you everything from food, perfume to jewelry and everything else in between. Now, if you happen to arrive to the Union Square Market early, there is something that you can do if you happen to be there on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday or Saturday. You will not be able to get into the area. It is securely roped off prior to the opening time. What you can do instead is what we did. We stopped by the Union Square Farmer's Market. This is what you think of when you think of Hollywood version of New York. Union Square does have a number of stalls here in their Farmer's Market. Look at the beautiful wreaths. Oh my gosh, they have eucalyptus in them. So it's not just the holiday markets here, it's also the Farmer's Market. This is fresher than what we see in the supermarket. This is amazing. Look at how fresh these Brussels sprouts are. So we got here too early for the holiday market to start and just by happenstance we came over here to the farmer's market. We came over here to the farmer's market instead. So if you are local, this is definitely something that you should do, but you don't live in this part of town. We don't live in this part of town and we are blown away by the freshness of the produce, the variety of the breads, the foods, the meats the flowers it's all just so amazing and don't forget to donate to city harvest while you're at it but this is really amazing we live nowhere near here and we were just talking about how we are going to come back and grocery shop so you have a chocolatier you have jewelry there are some really unique shops here like this artist has done artwork on vinyl amazing I'm trying to make some decisions like I think the soaps are nice the candles could be nice so the variety of items that are available here is amazing a lot of these are original and unique there are all sorts of vendors jewelry food clothing bags spices everything that you could possibly imagine ornaments of course so if you're hungry, no fear, there is plenty to eat around here. There's plenty of hot chocolate, there's coffee, there's crepes, there's all sorts of food available. I see dumplings, there's cheese wheel pasta, there's sandwiches, there are donuts, there's cider. 
whatever you need, there will be something here for you to eat. <laughs> and here we are at the Bryant Park Winter Village, also brought to you by Urban Space. So let's jump in here. This market is about twice as big as the other market. It took us roughly an hour to walk through the Union Square Market, so I'm curious to see how long it takes us to get through here. So we did a video on the Bryant Park Winter Village last year. We'll link that for you in the description below. We'll show you all the different um, areas you can order food and the ice rink. We'll give you a view of that now, but we go into much more detail in that video. But over here, we start off with the Macy's Holiday Square. And if you did not download the map on the app, it's also here in the village. So as I was saying, there's everything from apparel, so accessories and sweets. You can find it all here on the map. This is another market where you will not go hungry. There is plenty of food to eat here. You have the Hudson Valley Farmhouse. There's jewelry. There's all sorts of handmade items. There's hot sauce. Need some hot sauce? It's here. And you also have a place to sit and eat the snacks that you pick up. And of course, you can make reservations to get your tickets to skate on the ice here. We're gonna circle around there, but first we're gonna spend some time going in and out of the shops here. It looks like there are a bunch of candles and scents in this one big space called Fifth and Madison. Let's go in and have a look. Well, actually, Fifth and Madison is one of the stores along with Shane & Co, Soy Logic, which would be our candles, and Bebo Designs. Let's have a look. So on this tour, we're just showing you a sampling of some of the stores and the shops that are available. It smells like a little slice of heaven in here, guys. Love candle shops. So for the bar that's here as a permanent fixture, you have some seating here along with the swing. So that's really nice. This whole area is roped off for private service here. So book page art. You have stuff for your animals over there. You have French York. And here's some more food for you. Fresh cider donuts and gingerbread boys and girls. Ooh. Joe's Coffee is over here. Oh, and comfort stations. Here are the restrooms. So they have these porta potties, the fancier ones. Um, looks like there's okay. someone there to that. clean them. And it's open from 8 to 10. And ladies, of course, there's a line. Now we've stumbled upon some crepes. There's a crepe cafe. They have all sorts of sweet indulgences here, as the sign says. Looks like it could be a problem if you have a sweet tooth. And then here are some areas to stand with tables. There are tables for you to sit along the way. And then over here, there's also some more sweets for you. So there's plenty of sweet stuff. And actually, on the sidewalk over there, there are more vendors. So let's just go have a look at those. This is a lot of fun. I'm having like the best day ever. The weather is great. It's amazing to see everything that we saw up at the Union Square Market and then down here. So much food and so much merch. Now these are some of the vendors that are outside of the park proper. They have so many vendors they don't have enough room for them all inside. So you'll see some here and I imagine we'll find some on the other side of the park as well. And so even outside here, there are some places for you to sit and eat. So if you don't find a spot inside of the park, you can also come out here. You can either stand or you can sit. Communal seating. So a few notes about the holiday market. So it is open from 11 to 8 on most days and then 10 to 8 on the weekends. Um, the rink apparently is free admission for ice skating, but I'm sure they get you on the skates. And the shops here are open through January 5th. The loge or the lodge bar and food hall, that's open through March 2nd. Now the other thing I want to tell you guys is as you are going in and out of some of these vendors, because we're in a park, the entrances to the stores are built up, so watch your step as you're coming and going. As a standard part of the experience here at Bryant Park, there is a carousel. Here are the hours uh, based upon the time of year that the carousel is open. 
And here are the ticket prices. A single ride is $4 and a discount car for 10 rides will give you a $30 price tag. There are no refunds or discounts. And what I'm noticing, similar to the Union Square Market, most of the food, not all of it, but most of it seems to be to one side of the market. So there was a bunch of food back there where we started and it continues over here. Again, you will not go hungry. So I was just saying to Paul that there's truffle cheese pizza over there. It smells delicious. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And I said, man, I'm not gonna ruin my lunch. Brian Grill. Oh yeah, like my advice is that's it. And the food continues over here. There's hot chocolate. There's ice cream. Oh look, now there are cheese steaks by the truffle list. They are going to just kick me off of public transport on the way home because I'm gonna be smelling up the place with some truffle. I'm sorry, not sorry, but either the pizza or some cheese steaks. Oh my gosh. All right. I survived the encounter with the truffles. So we are headed now towards the back of the New York Public Library, um, close to the Bryant Park Grill. We're not going in just yet. We have reservations for that, so do stay tuned. We're going to just keep looking around at all of the shops and the venues. And by the way, is the Bryant Park Grill absolutely beautiful? Look at how lovely the decorations are. They have a Christmas tree in there. Oh, it's just beautiful. So you have bars, bracelet bar across from the restaurant, the Bryant Park Grill. You have Murr and Grand. There are so many different aisles that you can go up and down here and ways to lose your party. Oh, look, a Christmas tree. Aww. And there is the namesake of the park, William Cullen Bryant. And I just want to stop and pause here for a second. I don't know why I'm surprised, but I am surprised to see a Christmas tree already decorated. I guess because I judge everything by whether or not the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree is up and ready to go, which it should be soon. But this is really pretty and I can imagine it must be lovely at night. And now the other thing I wanted to say is that Bryant Park Holiday Market, this is what I imagine that holiday markets are like in Europe. This same sort of feel with the intimate booths. Union Square was really very nice and so far I'm going to reserve judgment. Yeah. Just the sheer size of this park and the ability to have so many more spaces available for rent and use. This might end up being the answer to which one wins out, but I'm going to reserve judgment. We have found the curling cafe and bar. What happens here? Each curling session is 90 minutes and you can't be larger than eight people. No smoking, no outside food or drink and do not step into the curling lanes. Who knew this was a thing here in New York? So now a few fast facts. Uh, this is iceless curling. And again, your session is 90 minutes. You get a private lane and you get use of a dome and food and beverage options. You can make a reservation if you're interested by using the QR code here. Hey guys, I just wanted to let you know that I checked out the pricing on the curling. It's over a thousand dollars for a small party. You get the dome, you get drinks, you get something to eat, and by something I mean fries or sliders. Fries and sliders. And 90 minutes in there for over a thousand dollars for a small party. And this is what I'm talking about when I say both of the markets have really very unique gifts. This place is called Wonder Time. They're beautiful. It's pieces from Alice in Wonderland, it looks like. By Damaris. And the truffle list is everywhere. I have to get a card, hold on. This is the type of place I would have shopped for Paul back in the day when he was more of a golfer than he is today. You know, that happens when you have kids. But anyway, Mr. Mark Golf Kits. Um, unique, just unique items. This is another one of those unique gifts. Flutter by Katie. So if you know anyone who loves butterflies, 
You should definitely check out this cellar. Um, amazing butterflies that she's found and she's preserved under under a dome. They're really beautiful. Ah, I see the red hook lobster pound over there. The cheese wheel pasta is back. There are tamales, there are dumplings. So yes, all of the food seems to be along this aisle over here. <laughs> Silly puppets. And this is also downtown in the market down there. <laughs> so we are now near the entrance to the Winter Park Village skating rink. Admission is free, but as I said to you earlier, you are going to have to pay to rent those skates. They're $18 to $57, depending. If you want to do a premium skate, that's 156 to 182 so that's extended time on the ice and access to a private lounge and more. You can check your shoes for free. You cannot check your bags for free. They're going to charge you for that from anywhere from $8 to $18. They do skating lessons at $37, and you can add on like little skating aids for $26. Helmets are free. Socks are 6 bucks. To sharpen your skates is 20 and they can do it for you while you wait for 41 so these are the prices to skate here so it's not exactly free all right so you can get yourself an igloo go ahead and scan the QR code I'll let you know how much those cost but in case you're interested this is what the igloos look like and usually they have a time limit on them they they come with food there's some down here and there are some on the upper level so check the price on the igloos it's six hundred and forty five dollars at least it's less expensive than the curling over on the other side of the park but you get something to drink and some chicken fingers Yes, we did try Bryant Park Grill for the very first time. As a New Yorker, I've walked past that building a million times and have never gone in. I have to say, it was really nice. It's touristy, yes, but the food is good and the price was not bad for the quality. We spent about $113 on our meals. We got two appetizers, two mains, and two soft drinks. $113 plus tax. In New York dollars, that ain't bad at all. Now, here's what I thought about the food. The crab cake I thought was delicious. The sauce on top had ground mustard grain in it. You could see it and feel it and taste it. What threw me off a little bit there is that the sauce was a little citrusy, a little too citrusy for me, but if you take the sauce off, I really enjoyed the crab cake because the crab cake was mostly crab and not just filling. That was really important and if you are a crab fan, you know. There's nothing like a crab cake that really has crab in it and less bread or less filling. The other thing that we had was the calamari. Now the calamari for me can be a bit of a hit or a miss. This was mostly a hit. What saved the calamari was the breading that it was in. It felt more like a cornmeal breading. It fried up really very nice. It was not dry. It was borderline, um, but it was not dry and rubbery. It could have used a little salt, but all of the sauces that came with it were delicious. We would recommend both the crab cake and the calamari. Now the other dishes that we had, I had the classic chicken Caesar salad and I have to tell you, it was nice to have a proper chicken Caesar salad. It was really very, very good, surprisingly good. I will tell you that when the dish arrived to the table, I took a look at the chicken and went, oh, this is gonna taste like rubber, but it didn't. It looked dry, but it was not. It cut easily with the butter knife. It was not juicy per se, but it was not dry. Um, I'm gonna say it was succulent. Um, but it was really also very well seasoned. It was nicely done. It was a huge portion and I have enough that I bought it home for dinner. Now Paul had the mushroom stuffed ravioli. It came in a sauce with artichoke and edamame. He liked this dish, but he felt it was a little too citrusy. Now I had a chance to taste it as well. The mushrooms were 
delicious. It was great. The piece that I had was not sitting in the sauce that his dish came in, so I didn't get the notes of citrus that he was clearly getting, but he still enjoyed the dish even though it had citrus overtones. So would we recommend Bryant Park Grill? Yeah! As far as touristy things to go that you could really waste your money on, this really wasn't one of them. I found it to be really great. There were also um, brunch options on the menu, so if you don't want a more of a, a main or a lunch dish, you can have breakfast. There were breakfast burritos and the like, pancakes, etc. Had pumpkin pancakes on for the season. So there is something for everyone, including a kid's menu. Our little guy didn't come with us today because unfortunately he was not up to it today, but still, if you wanted to bring your kids there, I saw plenty of families there. I will tell you though, it is noisy. It's not the place to go for an intimate conversation. A lot of people chattering, talking, and the acoustics amplify the voices in there. So you're not going to have a quiet meal there, but you will have a good meal. So is Bryant Park Grill worth it? I say yes. If you're going to do the market anyway, I would definitely do this too. Just remember to make your reservations in advance. Now both of these markets tend to show up on best of lists. The Union Square market tends to show up on the best of New York lists and the Bryant Park market tends to show up in international lists. So we have one of the most world renowned holiday markets right here in New York City. So that leaves us to answer one question only. Are both of these markets as magical as everyone says? The answer is yes. I can say that they are both magical. They are both amazing. If you want a quieter vibe, you want to head downtown to the Union Square Market. If you want more of a hustle bustle, what I'd imagine a European Christmas market feels like, you want to head up to the Bryant Park Market. I will tell you a lot of the same vendors are in both locations. So you will see more over at Bryant Park than you will over at Union Square, but some of the vendors do repeat. So don't worry about that. You won't miss out on too much. So now which of them wins out? For me, it was the Bryant Park Market. There was so much food. Paul and I were talking about it on the way home and we like both of them. And he was factoring in the farmer's market downtown at Union Square. And I was like, no, you can't do that. So taking that off the table because it's always there, he also agreed that Bryan Park would be the winner in this matchup. Have you visited Union Square or Bryant Park holiday markets before? What do you think is the better market? And is Bryant Park one of the best holiday markets in the world if you've had experience with others? let us know. Leave a comment below. There is so much to see and do here in New York and this is really just scratching the surface. Be sure to check out our New York City playlist for more fun and wonderful things to do around the city. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this walk through our first time visiting these holiday markets and the Bryant Park Grill. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so that you know when the next adventure begins. And no matter where your next adventures take you, we hope that you enjoy the journey. Bye now.